Hey guys, this is Natasha from Starlight Wigs, and today I'm going to be showing you how I made these cute little antenna for my moth wig. This same technique could be used to make leaves or feathers or any similarly shaped prop, so let's get started. To make the base for my antenna, I simply took a piece of thin crafting wire and sandwiched it between several layers of a clear packing tape. This is a technique I have seen most often used in the making of drill curls, but I have found it very useful in making pretty much any kind of thin light prop for wigs. We will also be needing a clear drying PVA glue. I like to use Aileen's Tacky Glue because it is water based and water soluble, which makes for quick cleanup and quick mistake correction. We will also be needing something to spread our glue with. This is my favorite tool, it is my plastic palette knife. You will see in the video though that I do also just use a scrap of plastic I had laying around, so whatever you have on hand will work. And lastly we will be needing hairspray. This has got to be glued and it is a wig stylist's best friend. This is a glue-like formula that will work much better with synthetic fibers than any other hairspray. So as you can see, I've already got my base made up here and I've selected the colors I'll be working with. To start, I've decided to take a thin piece of orange fiber and select that out as my first piece I'll be putting down. We need to work in very thin sections because we want the glue to soak all the way through the fibers when we place them. For this prop, we want to cover one side at a time with the fibers starting in the middle and then angling up and out so that we create a cute little fan and when we mirror it on the other side, we get a lovely little bee. So to start actually laying the fibers, first we need to put down a little layer of our glue. It's important that we don't make this glue too thick because if we oversaturate our fibers, we can make a big mess and when it dries, it might be a little more visible. But it's also important to make sure we put enough because if we don't, it won't be able to fully saturate the fibers and then we're gonna have a lot of flyaways and a lot of problems. So once we've got our glue all placed down, we can measure out our fibers and decide where we're going to be putting them and carefully place them on our prop. And now we get to see why my palette knife is so important. If we've done our job right and have the correct amount of fibers and the correct amount of glue, running our tool over the top should leach just enough glue through that we can swipe a little over the top and make sure all the hairs are contained and everything is gonna stay right where we want it. And now we get to begin the slow and painful task of continuing this process all the way up the feather. done one side and you've allowed all the glue to dry, you have the fun opportunity to flip to the other side and start the process all over again. And once you have all your fibers in place, you can take a pair of shears and trim down your edges to get your final shape. 
You'll notice for my prop, I left quite a bit of length in my fibers over the edge of my base. This is because the shape I was going for was a soft, fluffy looking moth antenna, and I really wanted to keep that same fluffy texture without sacrificing shape. I think this could also work really well if the prop you're trying to make is like a fluffy down feather or something else soft to the touch. But if you want something with cleaner lines, like a flight feather or a leaf, I really suggest just making your base the size you're gonna want your final prop and then gluing down your fibers and trimming everything right to the edge so you get nice clean lines and nice defined shape. And then once you're done that side, you can let the glue dry, flip it over, and start the whole process all over again. So once our props are completely covered and we've allowed them to dry and trimmed everything down to the shape that we want, it's time to move on to the next step, which is lining them. Our props currently have a pretty visible line of wire down the center, but that's okay because both feathers and leaves have a vein down the center and we can use that to cover them. The process for laying down these slightly longer fibers is pretty much identical to the previous one. The only notable difference here is because I'm working with a smaller group of longer fibers, I have a higher chance of flyaways, so I do spray my bundle together with some got to be just to make sure everything stays together nice. Alright, and we're almost done! Now that the glue is all dried and our fibers are all trimmed into place, just pick up that prop and bend that wire into shape. Since I'm making antennae and I wanted symmetry in my shapes, I put my props one on top of the other for the first bend. And once I was happy with that, I separated them and twisted one to the right and one to the left. And there you have it, perfect symmetry. Hopefully this was helpful and you guys can use this technique in your future projects. Happy crafting, bye.